In this unit, we want to deal with how disease uh, has influenced uh, the process of conquest and exploration in world history. Um, how does it affect the way these processes happen? And this has been such a big part of world history, Craig. Well, that's right. You know, the, I mean, one of the big issues is uh, either A, carrying your own diseases to a new culture, a new area of the world where they haven't had these diseases before, or picking up something new and taking it back with you. Yeah. So uh, it's been kind of a gift-giving experience as far as diseases go uh, during the exploration and conquest. And we see so many times in history where disease has either accelerated the conquest because it wiped out all the natives, or it slowed the conquest down because the con uh, would-be conquerors uh, couldn't deal with the diseases of the place they wanted to go. That's so right. They're, it's ruined both ways. Yeah, yeah, just depend uh, on where you're going and uh, what diseases you're running into. And, and there are still consequences of this today. There are places in the world where, where we really haven't been, where we haven't explored, where the diseases have, in, have inhibited us from, uh, from exploration. Great example. Uh, the difference in the story had smallpox and measles and then tuberculosis not wiped out 95% of the Native Americans when Europeans began to arrive. So amazing influence there uh, in history. That's right. And I think what you see is that uh, as these people go out and explore, particularly in the time frame when they had no idea about uh, contagion, about diseases, about how these things were transmitted and spread, that, uh, that had a profound effect on, uh, on what they were doing and where they were going. I mean, th you can think of a few things like we will talk about, like... Uh, the discovery of North America by the Vikings. Right, right. And uh, th they didn't have diseases with them, and so they were unable to uh, make the progress of Spaniards, which a little bit later in Mexico and Peru. Things like the Louisiana Purchase, uh, amazing event in American history, influenced by mosquitoes. That's right, mosquitoes and a little virus that they carried. And even uh, as a, as a result of that, the Lewis and Clark expedition had some significant uh, experiences with disease that could have thwarted that and really changed the course of the history in the United States. And in connection with the Lewis and Clark, Craig, how many books have been written about that and how rarely historians pay any attention to that issue. Uh, as we get into this, we're going to run a yellow fever a bit. And so uh, Craig is going to uh, help us a bit understand that particular disease and how it's influenced. You know, whenever I think of this, Craig, I remember, because I'm old enough to remember, I guess, the 1969 moon landing. And when those fellows came home, like Lewis and Clark from the Northwest, they came home from the moon and we, 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 we what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you can kind of take, take what happened there and put it in the perspective of, uh, I think the earlier conquests like Columbus, can you imagine Columbus coming home and being quarantined like we did with the yeah. astronauts? But that, that's a really interesting story that began. Uh, Michael Crichton, a novelist at the time, uh, wrote the book Andromeda Strain about a virus that came from outer space and had a profound uh, effect starting an epidemic and, and then uh, got people thinking. Of course, we're worried collectively as a scientific community about what might be on the moon, don't want to take any chances. And so uh, when they come back, uh, yeah, we take all the astronauts, put them in the quarantine vessel and watch them for four or five days, see if they drop dead from some moon virus. But the amazing part of that was uh, something that happened right after that, and that's loss of fever. Uh, loss of fever, at the time, we're just beginning to discover new hemorrhagic viruses coming out of the tropics where, where we hadn't done a lot of exploration, where we hadn't done a lot of conquest. And loss of fever shows up. Which reminds me of Ebola. Yeah, and Ebola today, uh, as we push into areas where humans just haven't been because of population pressures or because of needs for resources, we're going to continue to bump into diseases that are going to create a, a lot of problems for us. And chikungunya, which had been around in Africa for a long, long time, and somebody shows up in the Caribbean in 2013 and hundreds of thousands of cases across yeah, with, Latin America. With, within a year. So, so this continues to happen today. Historically, if we can look back and understand and see its role, and then I think uh, as we look around today in our own events, we'll see that this has continued to be a an issue.